This week on Malaria Watch TV, we hear Christine's story, how malaria affected her, and how she is fighting malaria. I first came to Ghana in August of 2008. I went for my junior year, first semester, fall semester. And I went there to study at the University of Ghana and also to conduct research funded by a scholarship that I had gotten at school. I definitely did all the preventative measures. I'd heard from my doctor, you need to be really careful with this, and I knew that Ghana was particularly endemic, so um, the rates there were really high, so I, I wanted to make sure that I protected myself. So I did sleep under a net. I wore long sleeves at night, wore long pants at night. Um, I made sure to try to keep all my doors shut, clog any extra um, holes. There were like holes in, the, in my dorm room, so I tried to cover them up with sheets and stuff. So I really did try to take every preventative measure, but I was actually went to the shower and then was leaving the shower to walk back to my dorm room, which is outside. There was an outdoor uh, shower, so we went there. And while walking back, I had gotten four bug bites just in a matter of like two minutes. And it was one of those four bug bites that gave me, gave me the malaria. Well, I woke up uh, and I had a funny tingling, kind of like when you hit your funny bone, in both my elbows and my knees. And I kind of had it all day and I thought, oh, I'd slept wrong. And by the next morning, I knew that that wasn't the case. It was, it was definitely malaria or some other form of sickness. And I went to uh, the hospital and got sent around to different places to get my blood taken and then found out that I had gotten Plasmodium falciparum, which is the one of the strains of malaria. Here I am, I'm, I'm sitting in a hospital and all of us are here and struggling because we can't get the care we need because poverty is just overwhelming and you can't escape it. And even though I was white, I couldn't escape it because I couldn't get the right doctors or the right, the right medicines because they weren't available at the clinics that I had gone to. So it was definitely a wake up call that I'm so privileged and so lucky to be able to get the care that I get in the United States and I don't think I'll ever forget that experience. I could leave Ghana when my body was, was done. I couldn't take any more. And because I was a white American who was well fed for 20 years, I was able to have great access to the care. Um, you know, my body was able to fight off cerebral malaria, but you know, other, other children, especially younger children who don't have their resistance built up that maybe a 17 year old have, they'd, they'd have no chance. So I definitely think that my inherent advantage saved my life and helped me walk again and helped me be able to, you know, get the, the cognitive training that I'm getting this spring from a neuroscientist. I mean, no African, regular African on the street would be able to get that. So I've had a lot of help from a lot of people and I wouldn't have had that in Ghana. I'd still be in a wheelchair mostly. Some people, most people don't know about malaria and the few that do don't really recognize that you know, 200,000 children every year get long-term cognitive effects. I mean, I had, I had no idea, and I knew a lot about malaria because I had researched it before, before I had left, but I still had no idea that cerebral malaria existed, and I had no idea that, you know, you needed so much protection all the time. You know, I just, I had gone through all these limits and all these extents to make sure that I had protected myself, but in just a span of two minutes from walking to the shower to my room, I get four bug bites and almost die. Like, you can't, you don't realize how much looming threat infectious diseases in the developing world until you're there and you're living. And I think that Americans in particular have the responsibility and have the privilege to help by donating to, you know, giving their time to educate others to just simply learning about it and talking to their congressmen. My name's Christine, and while I may look like you and sound like you, I shared the experience of malaria with countless people across Africa. Together, if we remain committed we can end this disease and make sure no one has to suffer needlessly from malaria. For more on the fight against malaria, visit us at malariapolicycenter.org. Malaria Watch TV is a production of Malaria No More.